Exactly. Right, what's happening, people? If you've been following the podcast for a while, you've probably noticed I've started banging them out, right? So, truth be told, I've been doing short form content for the last two years. So, that's like Instagram reels and TikToks and stuff. And it's very tiring having to make one of them every day. You would know that yourself, Cuba, by now, wouldn't you? Uh, of course. It's fucking well tiring, right? So I've been trying my best to do as many podcasts as po possible. So people say to me every single day, like either on Instagram or Instagram DMs, question boxes, or like whatever, how do you actually start the gym? Because I know it's a very overwhelming topic. Mm -hmm. So... Before before we actually get started, what I want is a favor from you. So on Spotify, you can actually rate the podcast. So you can give it like five stars. There's 13 so far. One person gave me one star. Whoever that is, <laughs> tell me your address and I'm going to go <laughs> kick fuck out of you. <laughs> anyway, if you can rate it five stars, that would be very helpful. And if you can like it on YouTube and then if you if you want, leave a comment. If if you give me one stars, honestly, I'm going to slash your tires. So please don't. Um, but anyway, before we get into this podcast, you uh, Cuba was on the podcast two weeks ago. So if you don't know him, you might find this podcast just out the blue because of the way I'm going to title it. So Cuba is someone I work with. His full name is Cuba Lewandowski. <laughs> Got it right last time. Um, like we said last time, he's a bit of a virgin because he loves the NFL. <laughs> A very good coach, and most of all, Poland's top ever goal scorer. All right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Right, Cuba, how are you? Really good, man, doing great. Good. You're up to fucking, 50, what is it, 17k on TikTok? Nearly, aye. It's mind-blowing to me. What did you have a few weeks ago? Uh, 1,800. That's Literally two weeks ago. It's crazy. And you, how are you finding the short-form content life? Um, A lot more pressure now stressful uh, are you what are you feeling pressure because you got followers uh not because i have followers but i feel like now people because people message me saying oh you help me you motivate me so much and yeah, now, yeah, now i'm like okay now i have to because beforehand i could have just posted a video without caring if it does well mm -hmm. like if it done bad it's it's fine because it done bad it don't it doesn't matter but now i want to put out actually like helpful content that will help people here. yeah so you feel like a pressure to deliver for maybe, them maybe not pressure but it's like I don't know how to see it. It's just different. different like, but do you do you have an anxiety about it? No, 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 no. Right. Anyway, so for this podcast, right, I'm gonna split it into so you actually understand what we're gonna do. I'm gonna split it into one, two, three, four, five, six, six segment segments, right? And I've done this for everything you need to know to lose fat as well. So this is everything you need to know to start lifting or starting the gym. This isn't like starting in the gym hit training or starting in the gym cardio, starting in the gym with lifting, Period. building muscle and built. That also would be the exact same thing for fat loss as well. Like we'd prescribe you to lift weights three times a week, even if you're going to do cardio as well. This is what we, we would do at least three times a week, um, lifting weights. So there'll be six sections. We'll try to touch on everything. And then if there's anything you want to know to do with fat loss, we aren't going to touch really on nutrition. We'll maybe vaguely touch on it for like two minutes. Mm -hmm. But pretty much everything you need to know about fat loss is in that other video that I may maybe uploaded two months ago that's called Everything You Need to Know to Lose Fat. Um, so this can apply to people that are trying to lose fat and also get in better shape, but also can apply to people that are just trying to start the gym and fat loss isn't an issue for them at all it's just about building muscle and getting in the gym and um, right so the first topic is gym anxiety cuba did you suffer from gym anxiety at all when oh, you first started of course yeah i think everyone does to, to some extent i don't think anyone goes into the gym being really confident about what they're doing and stuff um yeah. i started at 16 um and it was i started at a gym uh, where there were a lot of big guys that were juicing so it was intimidating man it what was. gyms this uh, out them hmm? out them it was dw d4 dw fitness or in sports the and the fort i fort now it's everlast it's not like that anymore because they made it more like commercial so mm -hmm. it's uh but beforehand it was a lot worse how did you combat that and did you go why did you decide to start going and also, how did you get over the sort of gym anxieties? Uh, so I started, I've always been kind of doing home workouts. Um, oh, really? Like oh, yeah. those calisthenics. I've 
Is that how you pronounce that? Calisthenics. Whatever. Don't ask me. Yeah. <laughs> Can't pronounce it. <laughs> uh, pure self-diagnosed dyslexia. I mean. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, I always, I, w- I was always active with sports and stuff. Um, and then one day I remember because you had to be sixteen. Now you can be like fourteen and join the gym. Mm. Um, but I, I turned sixteen, and then I was just—it uh, wasn't one of those like, oh, I'm being bullied. I need to look bigger. It's just something I always wanted to do because yeah. I've I've seen those. Um, I've always been watching like guys in the gym, them training and stuff. So uh, one day I think I, I just booked a um, gym tour whatever and dw and I like just, an induction induction i uh, and i just started going from there did you have a planner in no no, no. i literally walked in and i used every machine in line done exactly what everyone does and what i've done as no, well i don't so know what this is what so we are going to try fast track it so you don't do the same stupid shit yeah. that everyone does like me and, me and cuba have done and everyone basically everyone does mm-hmm. um so what you would do is go in the gym you would pick you would just go around every machine like in clock uh, in a clockwise uh, fashion. Just pick a way I can do three uh, times ten. No, even that. I think I, I was just there for however long I felt like. Just a fifty reps. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I just picked a random way and I just repped it out. Yeah. Um. I think. And te- what? When did you start feeling that you were getting over gym anxiety? Um. I, I don't. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Like the um time frame. I mm. think the the more you know, the the easier it is. Yeah. Um, or like the better of a plan you have, the easier yeah. it gets. I always try to describe um, starting the gym as the same as starting a new job, mm-hmm. because every single new job I've started, I've been nervous as fuck because you don't know anyone. You also don't know what you're doing, and it's the don't know what you're doing that's the worst part of starting a new job and starting a gym. Because I've, I remember I started in a pub right and i'd never worked in a pub before and i never poured a pint before <laughs> on like my second day i they somebody asked me to get coffee cups from the kitchen right <laughs> i decided to put 20 coffee cups on a tray if anyone works in hospitality putting coffee like i was putting coffee cups on top of each other coffee cups don't go inside each other no. they like go to the side so I 20 right <laughs> and then there was double doors <laughs> So I tried to go through the double doors with a tray and I dropped every single coffee cup. Mate. First like, day on the job? Like my second or third day. Every single one smashed, right? <laughs> then instead of just like chilling out and like going, right, let's evaluate what just happened. <laughs> I went, right, they would need coffee cups. So you so went, I went to get more? I went to get more. <laughs> done the exact same thing <laughs> except this time i was like right last time i tried to push through it with like my back this time i'll kick it <laughs> and as soon as i kicked it i just dropped all the other ones <laughs> and then the the like stairs in front of the doors was like where the office was and my manager that had literally just hired me came walking down he's like what the the, fuck? and he's short 40 it wasn't even like la- like didn't find any amusement in it he was just like what the fuck and i was like I don't even think I said anything to him. I just went. Oh. What do you say? I don't know. Sorry, I, mate. I just started sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's still have a job. That's uh, crazy. And then I also, someone asked me for a baby Guinness. And, and a baby Guinness is like Bailey's with, I think it's, or is it Tia Maria? And then you put a bit of Bailey's on the top. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's just a shot. But when she said baby Guinness, I genuinely poured a guinness into a shot glass and gave her it <laughs> she was like you and you and i was like how long yes. did you have that job about five months i got better oh, this is what i mean you'll get better in the gym <laughs> <laughs> you'll get over it Baby guinness. i also poured eight like about six pints of guinness all over me because there was a there was a group like a, <laughs> i had a great first week in cuba <laughs> i can tell and there was a group of like businessmen with like six like six of them like all in suits doing a proper like fancy meeting and they had six pints of Guinness and I walked over with the tray. I just wasn't good with trays. Man. No. And the tray went to fall over the full table. So like you it was going that way. Going so I... Wow. You took it up on yourself to save the yes. businessman. Yeah. Just, I was letting the deal go through it. And they all just looked at me like... None of them... This was quite a... It was in Bovo and it was quite a posh pub. Full of pretentious cunts or whatever. But see if that happened in like a local pub everyone would piss himself laughing uh, and then i could laugh it off but they all just looked at me like what the fuck is wrong with that's you? the worst situation you can be in. i was just like i'll get you six more lads <laughs> don't worry <laughs> Shake. 
<laughs> but anyway, I found that's what the gym is like. Like you'll never, you always have anxiety going when mm-hmm. you first start. You're, you aren't going to go over it. Like you aren't just going to be able to like magically be fully comfortable in the gym. Mm-hmm. You're just going to have to go. And the best way is to try and learn as much as you can as quick as possible and actually mm-hmm. put yourself out of your comfort zone. Because as you get comfortable with knowing what you're doing, you're, you, you won't have the anxiety yeah. anymore. Of course. You might still have it a little bit, but you won't, you'll get, you'll dim it down a lot. Yeah. Uh, and it's a personal um, issue as well, because you've got like big bodybuilding. There was a video of uh, Chris Bumstead, which for anyone that doesn't know is like a world class bodybuilder. And he was talking about how he goes to a new gym. He has gym anxiety. Um, so it could just be maybe the environment. Uh, well, even as personal trainers, if I go to the gym, I don't know how to work some machines. Yeah. Like we went to that extreme gym. There was some stuff in there. I was like, oh, I have a fucking clue about that. I just don't know how to use it. And either. every personal trainer says the same thing because there's so many different machines, yeah. so many different things. You, you don't know everything. Y- even I felt a little uncomfortable in um, extreme gym. Yeah, it's not that. Yeah, it's it's like that's just what comes with being in a new place, isn't it? Yeah. That like what are so we'll go through some practical ways that you can get over it. So for me, sometimes the first gym you go to might not be the gym for you. Mm-hmm. Like if you're especially if you live in a city or something, there's plenty there might be plenty of options. There might be one option for you and it just has to be the one. But sometimes you've got plenty of different options. So I think the gym is important. I think ours is class. Uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. So if anyone's anywhere near the east end of glasgow we we coach and team train fitness and it's like the the nicest environment ever and when you walk in you won't actually think it's going to be what it's like because everyone's so nice in there uh, uh, that's i think what um gives anxiety to a lot of people the staff at some of the gyms yeah like there are gyms i've been to that you just f- feel unwelcome man yeah you just feel like you and it's no uh, a personal issue it's no that it's a new place you're in or it's the gym it's just people it's uh, yeah. people just make you feel uncomfortable i also think another practical thing that you can do is go with someone Aye. oh that's a big one yeah and that that's pretty easy to do if you've got someone there mm-hmm. they don't even have to be doing the exact same plan as you just, just them even, being there even that or they might not be as into it as you are but just having someone there even at the start so even if they don't want to carry on two months in at least you've now had two months of like gym exposure mm-hmm. and you're a bit more comfortable and you can maybe actually go yourself oh yeah you got anything else that you'd maybe say with gym anxiety um what i've seen a lot of people do that that may be tailored to people who are maybe more sociable sociable social 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 you struggle yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's social a uh, pure mind blower man but um, just asking someone for advice or talking to someone in a gym, even if it's the person in, at, like in the front desk, yeah. Um, or someone, if you don't know how to use a machine, just nudge the person beside you, uh, and be like, "Mate, people how do that was all the time in the gym, don't they? Aye. They'll just come up and be like, here because we know, they know we work there. Mm-hmm. They'll just ask us something, Aye. like just P. You can get a vibe off a PD if they're willing to talk to you. Like if they're if they're nice, like I would say, seventy eighty percent of PTs are nice. Mm-hmm. Just the twenty percent are the ones that give the reputation right and, so, and, you, and you know who they are straight up the bat. yeah you can you can sense if someone's actually sound mm-hmm. so the sound people just go out and ask them they, they'll sit and help you for like 10 minutes every time someone asks me how to do something in the gym i'll happily spend five to ten minutes just oh yeah them. it's really it's a good feeling to, to help i'm not looking to coach them not looking to do it no. i just the reason i became a personal trainer is to help people mm-hmm. so i don't need anything from that guy yeah. from helping them how to use a machine for five to ten minutes exactly. i really don't need it i'm mm-hmm. um, Right, so I think that's we've covered gym anxiety. Um, where where most people f- get overwhelmed, I think, is where the fuck do you actually start? Right. Like, so for me, I think how you can bypass all the stupid things we done, like me, what looking at all the men men's health <laughs> articles, doing Chris, um, not whatever, what's his name, Brad Pitt's workouts and uh, fight celebrity club, training, whatever. all of that sack all of that off mm-hmm. and this is what i propose you do right get some sort of plan so i've got one it's i actually want to remake my free plan so that's three day full body i forgot it's actually upper lower than full body mm-hmm. you're gonna do one as well when's that gonna be out it's out it's out right so i'll put both of them in the show notes right nice. uh, show notes on spotify and the description on youtube so just some sort of plan so that we actually want to get better at the same exercises 
I would you agree with that? Yep. Yeah. Um, and then we actually want to practice our form on the same exercises and get used to those movements. So the same way I fucked up the coffee cups, <laughs> I learned that I shouldn't be taking them on a tray. And that's maybe not twenty at a time. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> we learn from your mistakes. Yeah. Um. So how important do you think plans are, Cuba? Really important. Um, when was the first time you got one? Oh, I can't. Like it was pretty late i got my first plan because i thought um i just had that uh arrogant kind of mindset where oh i know how to use it well this machine shows it works these muscles so i know yeah, yeah. but i watched a bunch of videos so i don't need a plan uh so it was probably like a year in like i took my sweet time getting a plan yeah uh, but that wasted me a year worth worth of actual progress we still stick into the um like going around in a clockwise uh, motion like I, going clockwise I, the well, uh, over time it just became okay i know that's works chest and i want to work on my chest more so i'll, I'll do maybe something like that but it wasn't structured there was no structure to see it. see the way we're doing this right the way i've kind of just started going through bullet points we can just kind of wing it a bit more because i'm getting a bit stressed trying to look at this <laughs> and talk to you at the same time if you know what i mean um so what was your first plan where'd you get it um i think i just got it online i can't remember the name of it but it was probably something like uh um upper lower something upper like lower. that and yeah. it was like six, seven exercises. Or what? I actually think it was push pull legs, which pretty early on, it's probably not the best idea because it, it took me a long time to learn everything. Yeah. And, and progress in, any, in everything. But um, what was your second question? Can't remember, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was a, nevertheless, it was a push pull legs. Uh, and I've done that for probably, probably a year. And then I started making my Did own. Did you log your workouts? No, at the start. So you didn't track any of the weights around? No. When did you start doing that? Um, When I started properly, when I started going to uh, Team Train Fitness. Oh, really? That was the first time? So that's like two years ago, yeah. Right, so I think with where it actually started as well, for me, again, the mistakes we've made, I went in the upper lower as well when I first started the first mm -hmm. program I got. Um, I think everyone should start with three or four day full body. Mm -hmm. Just... If you're starting, if you're if you're listening to this, you don't know what you're you're doing in the gym. You wouldn't you wouldn't listen to, to mm. guys talking about how to start if if you were. Um, I think everyone should start with three day, three or four day full body, mm -hmm. and just go with that, run with that until maybe for a year or two, and then I agree look at other programs. Um, plus I I think only tra training for a year isn't long. Like if you no. break it down, um, so expecting yourself to know everything after a year and just because you've done a plan is also like you're it's a learning process it's a process yeah. so um i think i i used the wrong word i don't think i wasted a year because i learned a lot as well uh, about like discipline and showing up and all that stuff and rest all that um by like a year as in in, in high tight it's not a long time no. and you will Everything we are saying to like mitigate making mistakes doesn't matter if you listen to this podcast with pen and paper, you're still going to do some stuff mm -hmm. that isn't the best way to do it, but like you learn from it pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, just hopefully you don't fucking smash all the coffee cups in the gym <laughs> and you'll be fine. Um, how many like so a lot of people as well have this mindset that they have to like train every day and stuff? That's mm -hmm. one thing that you need to get out of your head straight away, yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of people have that mindset of more is better. Yeah. And that's just not the case in fitness. Le less and more efficiently is the better. Yeah. In terms of. Because uh, if you gym. think about it, muscle isn't built in a gym, weight isn't lost in a gym. So it's what you do outside of it as well. The rest is goes hand in hand with training. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people think more is better. So they neglect the rest part. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's the same way for everything i've done like if you go even if you get a running plan or anything it'll all give you rest it won't be like run every day oh, it won't right. be like run 5k every day it'll be like do a slower run that's like a recovery run do a longer run at a slower pace so that you can still run the next day mm -hmm. um it's not about like going as hard as you can no. with everything cardio is the same like it's not about going as hard as you can every time because you can't sustain that um so some practical tips from where to actually start right so i don't know if you've got any but i'll do one and then if you do have one sure. so one practical tip for where i actually start 
we got the plan how to actually improve your form would be to film yourself mm -hmm. so there's form videos everywhere on the internet i make video form videos all the time so you can watch mine or you can watch anyone else's and mm -hmm. um, just watch mine because they're better um <laughs> to improve your form film yourself and then i actually people don't think about this but i used to just put it somewhere quite far away that people wouldn't really see it was my phone mm -hmm. so it wasn't like i was filming myself right there and then like i'm up not obnoxious cunt mm -hmm. i had it like well away or like behind yeah, a bag or just right. not people would see it and maybe notice i'm filming myself but just not pure obvious because mm -hmm. that would that that would stress me out if people could see that I was clearly filming myself yeah just put it somewhere that's not a big deal i, I remember what you said in one of your like older tiktoks uh you said um that filming yourself in the gym is the next best thing uh from a personal trainer yeah you I don't have, remember saying that, but it sounds like that advice. was like that was like months ago, and it stuck in my head. And yeah. now I tell people that <laughs> I just blatantly copied you. <laughs> copy right um, um, yeah. yeah, well, that, that's why. Because what I used to see maybe about two or three years ago, I used to film myself, and it was the first. That's when my form started getting better. Because I would watch myself in the mirror and stuff. The mirror, really the same. mirror lies. Yeah. I'm not being funny, but when you watch yourself in the mirror, until you actually film yourself, you don't have a clue what you're doing. And the way I learned that was I actually used to film every single second of my freestyle sessions. Like, all right. I, that's just, I think all freestylers done that. I, I couldn't have a good session without the camera being on. Wow. Because you, when you're doing freestyle as well, so freestyle football is a sport, it's basically break dancing. You're trying to learn something sometimes. So, so it might take you... 30 minutes to learn a new trick mm -hmm. so when you all, almost get it when i used to watch it back i could see you see what the problem is yeah i could see it right okay that touch that i'm doing there i'm doing it slightly too much in the middle of my foot and you do it to the side of my foot or something right and okay. then that would be how i would manage to figure out how to do mm -hmm. the trick because in freestyle you don't have anyone teaching you you have to learn it by just watching someone do it and try to figure out how the fuck they've done it mm -hmm. so i think that's where i've got that from but i honestly think filming yourself and you can do it in the studio if it's dumbbells. Just go somewhere quieter. If you've got dumbbells in the house and it's dumbbell exercise, it's a dumbbell exercise. Try it at home. It doesn't yeah. need to be in the gym. You don't. If that really puts you off, it mm -hmm. doesn't need to be in the gym. Plus, I, th I think what goes hand in hand with videoing yourself is if it feels wrong, looks wrong, it probably is wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? If something just feels off about your form, uh, something maybe doesn't feel right, um, it probably is. So that. Um, with addition of a video you can kind of add the two together and be like okay i need to change this yeah definitely right i think that covers where it actually starts because you've got your plan you've got how to sort of improve your form the last thing i would say is if you can afford it even if it's for three months get an in-person pt i i honestly think if you're trying to learn you if you're going to try to find a pt if you're going to do it online make sure they're doing form reviews because mm -hmm. you get like sometimes people just can't afford an in-person pt or it just works out so much better for their schedule to get online make sure they're doing form reviews because mm -hmm. a lot of online pts it's like a program and check-ins and they don't do they don't really help you with your form um and then if you can get an in-person one get a good one yeah get a good one I, I def if you're packing a personal trainer i would say pack someone that looks like you so not in a way like if you're a woman, don't pick a bodybuilder. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, like if you're a tall guy, maybe pick a taller, um, taller personal trainer because he knows the struggles of you know yeah. different forms for different exercises. Or someone that's at least been in your position. Yeah, and yeah. Maybe got yeah. That's pretty good advice. Um, right now, another thing people stress out about is rep ranges. So what what do you remember be? Like when you first started about like rep ranges? I think for everyone that's that three sets of 10 or three sets of 10 to 12, I think that's the common. Even three knowledge. sets of 10 to 12 is better. I think it's three. Three it's, sets of 10, I think that's like the go to. Yeah, that's or the it one. Or it was I, back in the day. That's the one I remember that got me, and that's the reason I made no progress is because yeah. I stuck to that. And although, so three sets of 10 works if you know what you're doing, as in if you say you started your strongest, you you started your first set heavier and 10 was like almost your max and then you brought it down mm -hmm. or like you just knew exactly what you were doing with your capacity. The reason that like a lot of the stuff we talk about with rep ranges 
isn't that important because people just don't push themselves enough when mm-hmm. they're in the gym. You know, for a, like when you've got in-person clients, they always have like six reps left in them. Like right. they, if you're not there, they'll always stop before. And it's like a skill learning what your actual capacity is mm-hmm. to lift into it. Yeah. Uh, even um, a few days ago, I've had a, I've had a client and I, I can tell he can do more. Like he's like, oh no, I, I can't. And I'm like, I, I can tell you yeah. can't, you have a few more in you. Yeah. And I'm like, that's those last few that you weren't about to do, uh, that you had the energy to do. But it doesn't, that's the make or break between, a, you know, a session that's worth your time and not. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you want to keep this, because with these podcasts, that the fat loss one as well, the the full aim is to make everything as simple as possible. Not mm-hmm. for you to understand how like protein synthesis works and how you actually no. break down muscle. It's more about what the, the bare minimum that you need to know. To that's apply, a really good point. Yeah, to apply your training because you don't need to know all this stuff. No. Um, and I think a lot of people go into the rabbit hole of trying to find out too much. Yeah. And then changing a program because they found something that can contradict yeah, to something else. Can we go into the section, don't change your program so much? We can do this with rep ranges. All right. So um, I always tell people when they're like, okay, can we try this? Can we try that? Whatever. And I'm like, there's going to be time and place for that. But every time we do something new, we start from zero. Like we have to build it up again. And I'm like, you've got this great foundation. Um, Let's work on that. Let's improve on that. And if we need to, we'll do something else. So this is going to be rep ranges and like sort of how long should do you do your program. When I've ever programmed for myself, I always put too much in because I always want to do stuff that I like. And I always then I've read something else about how whatever. How it should be structured. Like maybe saying biceps or what I hit the long head and the short head and then I'm like how do I fit both of them in and Mm. then before you know it I'm doing too much and I'm doing something I can't recover from Mm. so I do think you need to take that into consideration if you're trying to make your own program as you're probably gonna add too much in or doing or make it unrealistic so I always think it is best to get someone else's program I know some people are really good at writing programs or whatever for themselves but if you're starting you're probably not Um, and every time I wrote my, my own pro- program, I should have followed someone else's. If you if you want to re- uh, write your own program, try to stick to nothing more than six exercises a session, I would say. That's yeah. the on the higher end of the spectrum as well. And like six ex- exercises a session is plenty. And if you've got more than that, you probably won't have enough energy to hit the last ones with enough intensity. Six exercises a session, that's a good ballpark to be yeah. in. And in terms of your rep ranges, right, they're really not that important. What you want to do is make, so anything between one to five, you're training more for strength. With hypertrophy, like when I started, it used to be like, mate, you have to do eight. A is the hypertrophic rep range, mm-hmm. like, or just it's like eight on the dot. That's the op- most optimal um, rep range to hit or just the optimal amount of reps to hit. Anywhere between five to 30, is like you're going to be absolutely fine yeah. in terms of hypertrophy. What you want to make sure is that you're training near failure, every, like every single set. Like every single set should be at least near failure. It doesn't have to be too failure. Mm-hmm. But again, another thing that, especially online clients, because you're not training with them, what I tend to get them to do is take the last set to complete another yeah. failure. And I mean like failure as a mechanical failure, not where they're actually. So where your form, mechanical failure is where your form breaks. Yeah. Th- so if you if you're doing a uh, an exercise and towards the end your form starts to uh, go down, yeah, that's mechanical failure. Yeah. So like a bicep curl, you could maybe squeeze out another three reps, but you'd have to swing. Mm-hmm. We're we're not going to that type of failure. We're going to failure where your form's still good. Your form will be slower. You'll be shaking, but the f- actual form will be good. You won't be like swinging or using other muscle mm-hmm. group, uh, m- other muscle groups. So I would take the last set. To complete on it each exercise to complete an art of failure just so you get a feeling for how failure feels like because mm-hmm. until you train to failure you have no idea yeah. what it feels like can we um talk about some of the cures not not cures but some of the signs of going mm-hmm. to failure yeah so um if you're making if you're in, uh, next to a mirror and you're starting to make weird faces that's a good tell i always tell people if you're making weird faces that's you look like you've shot yourself uh, here it's a good sign um 
you no, hopefully sh- you've not actually shot yourself. <laughs> hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, you're shaking, your body's shaking, the mu- especially the muscle you're trying to, to you're, you're working. Uh, if that muscle starts to starts shaking, that's a good sign. Um, you know, sweat, going red. Um, what, else, what, what else would you say? Did you say about the reps slowing down? Uh, reps slowing down, I Like the, your last two or three reps will be a good bit slower. Mm-hmm. They'll be a lot grindier. Um, and it'll, if it's some sort of isolation, it'll be burning a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good sign as well. So, so uh, I I tell people to go to failure, um, when they're first doing an exercise, you know, up the way until um they they can feel they're about to do it safe in a safe manner, yeah, and then go to failure on the first set just so they know where failure is and how far away they have to stay away from it. Yeah, that's a good point. And then the last thing I would say to th- and it's went out of my head, but I'll figure it out when I fucking finish this sentence. What was I going to say? Well, oh yeah. So when I said your rep range is between five and thirty, right? Mm-hmm. Typically, like you can do this, and all like sometimes people do, like oh maybe train into ten to fifteen rep range and do that for all my exercises, and then change their program and change to a different rep range. But the way I kind of like to do it is like your bigger exercises at the start, compound movements, and it makes more sense for them to be lower rep ranges mm-hmm. so you don't want to be doing a set of 20 on deadlift you'll fucking die no matter what the weight is like that'll just feel horrific um so your rep ranges i would typically have the the smaller ones at the start so say like a bench press maybe do that for six to nine and then towards the end it makes more sense to do like a leg extension for mm-hmm. 20 30 reps or like lateral raises for 20 30 reps and mm-hmm. you don't even have to go as high as that at all but if you're going to do higher rep ranges, it makes more sense to do them on like isolations and stuff. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, and keep in mind that the higher you go up in reps, the lower you will be able to go down in weight. And that's all right. Yeah. Th- that just, sometimes you just have to put your head down and okay, I need to pick this lightweight that you usually wouldn't have chosen uh, for a lower rep range. If the reps go up, the weight tends to go down. Yeah. And for some ex, see toward, you're wanting to make sure that you're logging your weights and you're trying to progress now you won't progress every week but you're wanting to it's progressive overload you're trying to in order to stimulate your muscle you're trying to give it a bigger stimulus at one up yourself week. basically yeah so even if that was you doing to put it simply right say your first week you had done three sets of squats for 40 kilos i uh, for say they were all 10 reps the next week Say you were trying to do between eight and twelve reps the next week, you would just try to get some of those sets closer to twelve. So even if you'd done eleven, eleven and ten, that's, that's more that's than good. the week before. Then the week after that, maybe try to do twelve, twelve and twelve. Then the week after that, put forty two point five on it and start between eight and twelve again. You might get ten, eight and eight, but then mm-hmm. build from there on forty two point five. That's the way you want to treat all of it. But to what like isolations and stuff, like say a lateral raise or bicep curls it's not going to go up as fast as the ones that you've can put more weight on yeah. which makes sense doesn't it mm-hmm. um with your program as well people like to program hop that's one of the biggest things that will fuck them up realistically you're gonna do the same 20 20 exercises 10 to 20 exercises for the rest of your life yeah that's it <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, uh, people try to um you know over it by put in an exercises that they it's exciting to try whatever instagram but, exercises yeah but e- like even those fancy looking exercises they still revolve around the basics you know what i mean like yeah. you like those um bench press variations it still go you know makes a full circle back to a bench press yeah or a d- dumbbell pr- whatever yeah exactly. um, so like you'll be the same 10 to 20 exercises but you might do variations of them and there's like absolutely zero difference really between you doing there's not much difference between you doing a bench press and a dumbbell flat press Mm -hmm. like it's a variation of it but it's the same exercise really gives you a slightly different stimulus with dumbbells you can get slightly further down Mm -hmm. but you're that's still the same sort of exercise so we're keeping within that sort of framework and uh, the difference between the two could just be someone uh, has you know it's better for them for their uh, brass mobility yeah to go for dumbbells and so it's uh, personal person dependent as well i think that's one other thing as well 
don't feel like you have to do any exercise at all. You can't miss out legs, but you don't have. It doesn't mean you have to squat. Uh, you don't have to barbell back squat. You could do a Bulgarian squat. You could do a different type of squat. Uh, there's so many squat machines: pendulum squats, uh, hard squats, hack, V squats, yeah. uh, belt squats. There's so many different. There's something for everyone. Even like a leg press, like you don't have to go down that route. You don't have to deadlift. You don't have to barbell bench press you don't have to barbell overhead yeah. press so so definitely if you just despise an exercise in your training try to find a variation of it yeah exactly and then one thing make sure that do you want to go for this because you were better well like the vertical pull because i'm sure you oh, yeah, yeah. That off. so just make sure your plans involve what right cool so every plan needs to involve us some sort of a squat or a squat or a variation give a example so of one. A, a squat the basic would be a barbell back squat if that just brings you so much misery that you don't want to do it uh, do something like a hack squat machine or a belt squat if, if your gym has it uh, or if you can't even lift the bar with a back squat regress and do a goblet squat or a yeah. body weight or um, a three-quarter squat whatever yeah, just yeah. A squat in motion is like one of the, there's few basic movements that just you need to include in your training. Yeah. So a squat would be one. Uh, then some sort of a hinge, which is where you break at the hips. So you don't need to deadlift. Um, instead, you can do um, RDL, Romanian deadlift. Uh, just something to get your hips, uh, hips moving uh, with your legs staying relatively straight. So that can be with bands, that can be with dumbbells, with a barbell. Body weight, even and um, body weight is a bit of a stretch, but um, just yeah. a variation of um. And it, to hinge. to sum up, squatting and hip hinging, squatting you can imagine you're bringing your bum to the floor. It's like you're hinging. sitting down on a yeah, a chair. like if you're gonna sit in a chair and then hip hinging. Imagine there's a button on the wall behind you, mm -hmm. and you're trying to touch the button with your bum, yeah, or you're trying to shut a door with your bum. That's I, hip hinging. I, I tell people to just imagine their body as being a literal hinge. So imagine your upper body can't move your lower body can't move it's the middle of your body that's the only and you've like got like a screw in there yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to put it uh, so um other stuff a uh, vertical push and vertical pull so if you think about um vertical uh, a vertical line would be um straight up and down mm -hmm. uh, so a vertical pull would be like a pull up that's the main sort of idea mm -hmm. that people have about a pull um to work up to that if you just can't do them or you hate them uh, a lap pull down or a variation of a lap pull down so just anything where you pull your hand from over your head down to your face basically yeah um the same for our vertical push so just that in reverse you're pushing the weight away from you over your head uh, so that can be uh, seated standing uh, on a machine free weights so like a dumbbell, a seated dumbbell press or a uh, standing dumbbell press. Like a military a, press or a machine shoulder press. Yeah. Um, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of options. Um, and the same goes for pull, uh, for horizontal push and pull. So horizontal, you push, you pull the weight towards you like a seated row. Um, there's a whole lot of machines that do that. Into. Yeah. Um, so, Anything where you're pulling something towards you. Yeah. So away from you, to, towards you, yeah. to, towards your body. And a um, horizontal push uh, would be your laying down uh, yeah. on a bench, even on a on on the ground. And there's a variation of a push. Yeah, um, but that's um, you being horizontal and pushing the weight away from you. So like a um, bench press, dumbbells, barbells, machines, uh, a Smith machine whatever so yeah, anything so anything but as long as the movement you're the exercise you're doing involves those was it five things yeah five or six six things anything goes basically yeah. as long as and you're uh, just trying to get whatever one you pick just try to get better at that so you've got a squat and we'll just name ones quickly right so squat if you're a complete beginner probably go squat go goblet squat mm -hmm. and then complete beginner go dumbbell remaining deadlifts for a hip hinge mm -hmm. um complete beginner um vertical yeah. pull go lap pull downs because a lot of people can't do pull-ups especially girls especially overweight a lot of people can't do pull-ups mm -hmm. vertical push 
Uh, which, would be a dumbbell shoulder press. Yeah, you probably best to do that seated mm -hmm. at the start and then try and move on. Or a, use a machine if you can. Yeah, or use a machine. And then a vertical push. You can do a machine chest press or like a dumbbell flat press. Is vertical probably. push. Vertical push? Man, I'm, I'm getting, lot, there's I'm so getting mixed up anyway. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Horizontal push. Horizontal push. So that's a, a barbell or a dumbbell uh, chest press. And then a horizontal pull. You can do, is that right? <laughs> yeah, horizontal pull. So horizontal pull like a row. Absolutely scrambled my brain. There. Yeah. Uh, um, like a row, a seated cable row. Or um, most gyms will have a seated cable row yeah. where you just, you've got, you're rowing towards you and, it, and you could also just do any kind of row where there's like two handles and you're rowing mm -hmm. towards you as well. So just make sure those, that's six things. Mm -hmm. Squ squat, hip hinge, vertical pull, vertical push, horizontal pull, horizontal push. Yeah. Right, I don't control. think you can put that in like any simpler. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't. No. Um, right. So that's rep ranges in your program covered. What are the most common issues? We'll touch on this quickly because I think we've done a bit the last podcast as mm. well. So I don't want to repeat myself loads. Uh, what do you find the most common issue is in terms of training with people? Um. So the intensity, as we, we've touched on that before, so I don't want to repeat myself, but intensity... Uh, people being um, trying to fit to uh, the whole session, even if they have 20 exercises uh, for some reason on their plan, they uh, got told that they can't be in the gym for longer than an hour. Yeah. And they try to fit all of that in an hour, which just be in the gym for as long as you need. Yeah. Basically. And with, so you get enough rest um, and enough intensity into your training. I think that's another one. People think they need to be out of breath. No, when they're first or sweating. Yeah. Have you seen one of those t-shirts uh, with like a hidden message until you sweat, until no. it's wet? Don't it's, like it all. It's stupid as fuck. It's stupid. Because people are like, so do I need to like run a marathon and on a treadmill to review? Because it says like you can leave once you see this message and it only shows up when you're like drenched in sweat. I fucking hate the fitness industry, <laughs> mate. <laughs> and I'm like, who's using that? Do, pe do people realize it's the fitness industry that does this to people? Oh, I like no one other has to blame ab about the situation of the fitness industry apart from the fitness industry. Yeah, like all of the eight week fat loss shreds, all of the lose certain amount of weight in certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. That's all the industry that's done it. Yeah. <laughs> and the people that work in it are trying to fix it. Rarely does that happen, man. <laughs> Even PTs play in it. Oh, I like, oh, a 30 day fat loss challenge. Fuck off, mate. Or, uh, you know, posing in front of a camera in great shape. Photo shoots. Photo shoots. Yep. Photo shoots are it. the worst one at the moment for me. Oh, aye. Like, oh, does it, people in our gym do photo shoots? They do, don't they? Mm -hmm. So we'll just move on. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's something I would never do anything close to that. It's unhealthy, mate. That's what it is. Just it's for unhealthy. a quick picture. It's, yeah, if, I, if you do it, it's sound. I just don't think it's beneficial for him. You're getting into the bodybuilding mindset, like on a low, low key scale, mm -hmm. and high key scale. Think, I pretty much as bodybuilding. Because like when it comes to shredding your body fat so much to to the point where all of your muscles are visible, depending on genetics, it takes it's more scientific than just being a calorie deficit. So you need to be on point, eating on the hour, eating a, drinking a certain amount of water. A lot of those people have coaches that have trained bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy as just you know. Yeah. Um, other common issues when people start. So the breath, breathlessness thing is massive. You're, you're trying to get stronger. Your main aim is to up the weights. So to log your workouts. And uh, so that example I made about like the up in your squat from 40 kilos to 42.5. If you don't rest in between those sets, if you're trying to like get sweaty and be like, um, I'm getting my breath back. I need to do another another set of squat yeah. to keep being breathless that, that's a good you point. won't up the weight you'll just stay the same so we actually need to rest in order to get stronger yep. it's not about being out of breath i said this in one of my um latest videos like the majority of your time in the gym should be you resting yeah you won't spend most of the time working out it's you in between never thought sets. about it like that yeah like because if you think about it uh, the reason, actually, fun fact, the reason why it was cool. so, so I'm gonna I'm about to get scientific. <laughs> uh, the reason why it was so common back in the day to do three sets of ten is because they thought the muscle needs to be under tension for 40 seconds, and they calculated that it takes 40 uh, ten reps should take 40 seconds. Right. So that's why it was so popular. Uh, 
but now we know it's no the time that the muscle is under tension that's the actual um resistance it's the mm. mechanical te- it's the um stimulus it's receiving yeah and, and it's not the time um because you can do like doing 50 uh, 30s reps will take you like a minute it's, it's longer i'm actually interested in how these sort of things come about like three sets of 10 like i've always came up with my own ideas of how some of the stupid fat loss myths come about so mm-hmm. i think no carbs before bed i think people like i think that's came about from people eating carbs before bed and weighing themselves the next day and then being heavier then not eating carbs before bed the next day and then being lighter the next day there's a lot of like um because that's just water weight like yeah, you're just you're still you're still probably the same mm-hmm. amount of body fat and everything you're just your weight's fluctuating same way if you take a shit before you weigh yourself you weigh less yeah. do you know what i mean it's as simple as that like you, yeah. you're still at the same point you're just yeah and, and that's uh someone commented on one of my videos saying oh well this is just common sense why would you have to make a video about that and i'm like if it was common sense you wouldn't be here watching the video yeah like everything if fitness was all common sense everyone would know what to do yeah and you wouldn't have so much confusion you know what i mean it's only common sense once you understand it right because like to me common sense would going into the gym for the first time was going around in a circle using every machine until and I'm, every single muscle group for me common sense in the gym would be absolutely fucking myself up <laughs> and then like that would be it like aye. i'd get better yeah that would be it for me getting better at 5k runs would be running 5k every single every, day every single day and Whereas, that's common sense right you yeah. want to run 5k just run well surely running the same time would be the best way to get better at that time but it's mm-hmm. actually like running for longer for slower times mm-hmm. and stuff it's the same with the gym so don't use your common sense at the start yeah fuck your common <laughs> sense <laughs> don't use your common sense at the start um other common issues people come up with main ones in terms of like actual lifting people usually have shit ankle mobility so for things like squats I would elevate your heels just youtube heel elevated like squats mm-hmm. and you'll see it you'll get yourself some artificial mobility for squats and then you can do some ankle mobility at the start that's probably a bit too much for you to take in just now other common issues shoulder mobility if you've got a desk job i often find people can't get their like they can't get their elbow behind their shoulder mm-hmm. if they were to lift it that's the best mm-hmm. way to explain that into mm-hmm. it if you can see on the video you'd be seeing me looking like i'm <laughs> I don't know, saluting a Nazi or something. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm Polish. That's offensive to me. <laughs> Never fall for that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Cuba. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, that's so that one's quite common as well. And say we were getting you to do the horizon. Mate, let's let's fuck that. Yeah, we've said everything. Shoulder press. So you would end up pushing in front of you instead of straight up. Mm-hmm. So that's common as well. And the so, best way to do that is do shoulder presses seated. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think what a lot of people get wrong as well that they have to warm up pro- properly like they did in primary school with yeah. static stretching and uh, a lap around the, the you know games hall whatever yeah don't do any cardio before you lift yeah As- maximum if you want to do anything just walk on the treadmill for five minutes or take it like a slow bike five yeah. minutes that's all you need and then all your warm-up don't need to get your heart rate to a certain amount no, or any of that no, shit no. don't need to don't need to be like starting to sweat just you can get your legs moving literally mm. that's the only get your way body I'd... ready for yeah. some sort of movement doesn't have uh, to be intense th- the rest of your warm-up should be uh exercise specific so if you're about to bench the the warm-up should be bench specific yeah so say your first set was 40 kilos on the bench do the bar do f- and that's it. five five reps on the bar then if increase it by five kilos do yeah, more. then do 20 25 mm do five reps after two or three that's you done and you don't want them to be hard whatsoever they mm-hmm. actually should be really fucking easy. really easy like really 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 because you don't want to exhaust yourself yeah. if you think about it doing heavy cardio like people run for 20 minutes before they lift you're exhausting yourself you've yeah. got all that energy and you're using it on cardio so you won't be able to perform uh, you know with your muscles as much another common the last common thing i would say is us uh, there's a lot of movements you won't be strong enough to maybe use like say for a barbell back squat you might not be able to even do just the bar yet mm-hmm. so there's always like a rack with smaller bars even like shoulder presses if you're doing a barbell 
girls, if you're starting the gym, you'll never be. You can't go up and lift like shoulder press that bar. Like you won't be able to. It's do it. twenty kilos. It's yeah. a lot of weight. So you won't be able to do it. So you can work up on the smaller ones. Even Romanian deadlifts, if you do that with a bar, I would start on the smaller ones and then work up to mm-hmm. the barbell. Um. So just bear that in mind. There's a lot of like ways that you can make things lighter. You don't have to go up and do. You don't have to get in the squat rack straight away. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. build up to the squat rack. Don't avoid it because a lot of people do that as well. Yep. Um. I think that's me covered all the common issues. There's obviously yeah. loads more, but yeah. they're there. If they have any questions, they can just reach out. They can just ask, can't they? Um, right. Last thing that we're not going to go into too much detail because I don't want, because I covered a lot of this in the fat loss stuff as well. Um, I just outside of gym considerations, have you got anything straight off the top of your head? Start me off. Start, start you off. Yeah, I'll get you fucking mid up for this one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sleep and recovery. So if you're going to progress in the gym, like you said, the, the actual progress is made outside of the gym. Mm-hmm. So getting your sleep right, 79 hours, 79 hours a night and trying to have some sort of regular sleeping pattern yep. is going to help, help you in life anyway. Yeah, like, <laughs> like in general you have life. more energy throughout the day. It's not just gym related. Yeah, so tying into like not training every day your like your rest days you don't need to be doing like any sort of high intensity yeah. training you can maybe go walk and stuff uh, you, you can do like some active recovery like you can go for a run yeah. or, a, or a walk but that's all that should be yeah like even whenever i've been playing football remember when i started back i was only going to the gym three times a week because mm-hmm. if i went four i couldn't recover and yeah. play football and stuff so make sure you're not trying to do too much and see this is another thing Every single time I've told a client of they're doing too much. So I've had clients have maybe started and then went, right, oh, I'm gonna play I'm gonna play squash three times a week and go to the gym, or I'm gonna hill walk, or I'm gonna start running. Every single time I've told them they've been doing too much and they don't listen to me, they've always hurt their back. And it's always their back. Really? Yeah. Well. And then every time they come to me, I've hurt the, my back. I'm like, what do I do? And I'm like, We well, go to physio and don't do it again. Hi. I can't help you there. You've already done it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. and what it takes you to get injured before you, like you you'll listen to me so don't try to do too much no there's it, no point there's no no benefit. no extra benefit yeah. there's actually less benefit because i i think where people get the idea from is those is getting following the wrong role models like those um yeah bod- stop watching last dance you're not michael jordan stop watching arnold chain yeah like definitely. that's a bad example because like bodybuilders they do train like twice a twice a day for two or three hours you're not on steroids you are not a bodybuilder you're a little fucking yeah stevie just take it easy man like uh just use that logic muscle isn't built in the gym it's what you do outside of it that matters if you keep that in your mind it would be easier to accept the fact that you shouldn't be training for too much protein intake just cover uh, literally in 30 seconds so between 0.8 grams per pound of body weight just Be between zero point eight uh, to one. Aye. Yeah. So zero point eight to one times your body weight of grams of protein per pound of body weight. Per pound of body weight. Yep. Jesus. So we fucked you, that up, Cuba. Yeah, we absolutely fucked it. Anyway, right. Example: If you weigh two hundred pounds, eat between one hundred and sixty to two hundred grams of protein that was every day. Mass. Yeah, that was really good. Wasn't <laughs> it? That was actually on there. Fucking cut that off, bad boy. Um, <laughs> and then don't worry too much about like making like if you can get it around about the gym sweet but there's no such thing as like an anabolic window no. like you don't need like spank 30 grams of protein as soon as you finish the gym which no. you'll see people do by the way you'll see them like literally inhale a shake after I the like gym sprint to the changing does nothing store. for you so no. pointless no. um just try it's, hit it throughout the day yeah, yeah exactly that, so try to focus more on how much you get throughout the day instead of trying to get a certain amount in a certain amount of time people say you want to try spread out throughout the day if you're hitting 200 grams of protein you're not going to do that in one sitting anyway so if you Mm -hmm. just hit the 200 grams of protein don't worry about it Mm because that will just work itself out anyway um like i said as well anything to do with fat loss and nutrition is in that other video we're not going to go in depth about anything to do with fat loss then the next topic is something you love to talk about just like consistency Oh, I consistency. So, um, like we said in the first podcast together, it just get it in your head that you'll be doing this for a prolonged period of time. Get out of your head that there's no twelve week no. quick fix. That you're just you're ac- not going to be in shape in twelve weeks. No, just accept that one year of your life will be doing the same roughly stuff. 
Yeah. And that's just how it is. Yeah. Like, I, I, I like how uh, Lane Norton says that it's not sexy. A lot of it is not sexy. Yeah. Um, there's nothing you can do that's, that sounds better that would work. You know what I mean? Than, and that, like, you will go off of this and you'll see a PT putting up a 12 week transformation. I'm telling you right now, that's not going to happen for you. Yeah. Because a lot of these PTs, bear in mind they're manipulating everything. PTs in the fitness industry. So you see all, don't just even, I actually think stop looking at transformation pictures. Yeah. Because even when I'm doing them, I'm only, like personal trainers won't tell you this, but I'll, I just, I don't need, I'm not desperate for clients, so I'm happy to tell people everything. Any transformation picture I've I've posted has been, like, like what, 10% of my actual clients. The mm. ones that have got the best results. Anyone that gets the, the best results either has really, really good genetics mm-hmm. or um, they've also worked hard as well. They've always worked hard yeah. and they've always done everything. But also the best ones that I always see, and I always see like bodybuilding t- type of people do this, is they get someone that is highly trained for maybe five, six years, mm-hmm. has maybe took six months off the yeah. gym and put on a bit of weight, and then they get them like in shape in 12 weeks. But whereas, they already have that work ethic there. You know, it's they, they all have that muscle. They already have the muscle. They already already have the muscle memory. They already know how to train, and they are already know how to eat. They just get a little bit of help for twelve weeks, and then no, people so. are like, "Oh, I can achieve that in twelve yeah. weeks." No, you fucking can't. You're starting from the bottom. It's going to take a long, yeah. long time. I, I, and just I, look at it as, "This is what I do now." Yeah. I I think what gets a lot of people as well because what they see as a twelve week transformation, but that's three months. Like, like the numbers small compared to how much time that actually took, consistent time and effort for that person to lose weight or put on muscle. Yeah. Like, I think it's just really easy to look at the number in a transformation picture and be like, I can do that in 12 months. I, I, like, and people uh, say, oh, if I don't get those results in 12 months, I, I must be a failure. Yeah, It's like, not. no, it's it took that person the same amount of effort and energy it will take you. It's... Yeah. Like, look, so just don't compare yourself to anyone else no. because we all... And I... I'm starting to despise anyone that any PT that says genetics or, or anything don't matter because it hundred percent does. Oh, but does. you're trying to get people in the mindset to not worry yeah. about it. That's the difference. You're trying to get people to do it regardless of genetics or whatever, because mm-hmm. genetics do play a part. Oh, Otherwise, course. everyone would be able to just become more Farah and run, mate. Like that's just <laughs> I could train as much as I want. I'm not running a marathon in that no. time. I I think people so. Um, but this is what we don't want you to worry about this. Uh, yeah, it's uh, like if you worry, don't worry about stuff that doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, ge- your genetics they matter a hundred percent, but what doesn't matter is somebody else's progress. Yeah. That's Just what allow you. That's what I've I've been saying as well. When you start going to the gym, just allow your body to do its thing. Yeah. Just just allow it to you know um go through all the pro- processes by itself. And you can't you can't control that no. you can only control what you do so don't manipulate what you're doing no if, if you're so if you're seeing progress and your lifts are going up or your form's getting better your mobility's getting better your your clothes are maybe changing a little bit try not to look in yourself in the mirror like all the time it's easy to do right but don't get too attached to how you look because that's when i'm also big on like try not to worry about things you can't control because people are always like how do I lose this back fat or like how do I lose this belly fat just or whatever? Just <laughs> just continue doing what you're doing. If you stress about these things, you'll always even if you lose a lot of weight and like your belly fat goes down a little bit, you'll still be able to hold some on it or then you might start going, Oh, but now like I wish my glutes were so much bigger. Just accept what is. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Yeah. Like and you you'll feel better just by improving it something. Yeah. And definitely don't compare yourself to a progress picture. Or a transformation picture or a video, or especially, please don't compare yourself to influencers I and have bodybuilders. Every single person on Instagram muted. Even if I've liked your picture, it's because you've maybe watched my story and you've got a story up, and I've clicked on it, and that's how I've liked your picture. I probably like about five pictures a week, and it's usually people I know or they've like watched something or liked one of my pictures and I've clicked on their picture. Mm. Since I've done that, my life has became exponentially so better, better because i don't compare myself to anyone mm-hmm. and as a pt it's really easy with money and like Reach anyone people, doing yeah. followers or how people look it's so easy to follow in that trap as a pt mm-hmm. and i have every single person on instagram that's muted. a good point man 
everyone and my life is so much better just isolate yourself just don't <laughs> <laughs> just isolate yourself and don't compare yourself you to can anyone. only work on yourself you yeah. can't work on anyone as, as much as because it's a cliche thing to say but that's just how it is it is but people don't really listen to yeah. it and if you this thing is even though it's so cliche because when i was following people on instagram can't help but do it you actually can't subconsciously yeah you, you can't help but do it um and then the last thing i really want to touch on is deloads as well because mm-hmm. i wouldn't even i know what a deload was for the first two or three years of lifting me neither me neither so if you're doing three day full body which is what the program is yours three day full body or mm-hmm. four three. if you're doing three day full body you don't need to worry about deloads too much and if you did you're probably going to have a week where you go twice and then you're, you've deloaded anyway mm. by default um day loading if you're training if you're training at least four times a week every five five to six weeks i would have a week where you either go in the gym and lift like 50 percent of what you usually do or 60 percent still stimulate the muscle yeah. but lift less yeah lift way less and um, pretty much very similar to like your warm-up sets mm-hmm. that we were talking about earlier mm-hmm. um or just don't go to the gym for like five days that's all it takes and what you'll notice is if you stop going to the gym after a long, long time of going to the gym, you'll feel so much better. Yeah. Because sometimes it can get a bit repetitive. You're, you've you maybe had a while in your training. All you need is some rest. So if you stop going for five days, you'll notice a huge increase in your... So when you're training, you're putting your body under stress. So here's some signs that you need a deload. If you just generally feel quite tired, mm-hmm. like just in general... If you feel quite beat up, um, if your lifts are really starting to stall, if you're if you're actually finding that you're going to the gym and you, you can't lift what you were lifting before, there's nothing wrong with you. You might just uh, like being needing to take a rest. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe other t- telltale signs. You just like, probably know. You just m- feel ment- shit mentally if you just start, you know, avoiding the gym. Or you're like, oh, I Dreading need to go. more than yeah. usual. That's probably a tell that you need some rest from the gym. And that can literally just be... I actually borderline prefer the five days off. Aye. Just just because it, make, it you gives you week. that time as well. Gives you Maybe gives you four extra hours that week to do something else. Mm-hmm. And then it also gets you excited for going back. Aye. That's the main thing for mm-hmm. me. Because when you're deloading, you actually still go to the gym. You're still like, I'm here and I'm still doing time. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whereas if you give yourself five days off, you, you're mentally stimulated. And then back. you're like, you can't actually wait to go back to training. 100%. That's it. Mate, I think we absolutely smashed that. It was so much better doing it with you rather than see the last one I'd done it myself. And you're like, you feel out of breath the full time. and you Because uh, you're talking so much. Every time you take a drink, you're stressed because there's been 10 <laughs> seconds of silence. And you're like, you, sounds as if you killed somebody in the um, room or something. People are just leaving. Yeah. Like one after the other. Yeah, so thank you very much for coming on see last time as well when i'd um i should i should have put it at the start um about the two free programs mm-hmm. um or the two free sessions actually that's what i'll do when we finish i'll put i'll just do a 30 second clip of doing we can do a free session and team train team train if you're up for that yes we can be really pushy with it as well yeah we'll just put it at the very start and cool. then we'll do that um have where can we find you again on social media yeah so it's kw.fitness on TikTok mm-hmm. and kwfitness.pt on Instagram. And then it's Coach Cuba. You can type that in as well. Coach Cuba with a K. Coach Cuba. Just, why did you do that? Just One of my friends like said it in a jokingly way and I just changed it. And I just like, went with it. Yeah. Right. Perfect, mate. Thank you very much right. for coming on. Thank you. Thank it's been you. a pleasure once again. It's always a pleasure. Right. Catch you in a bit. Right. Take care. Yeah, I was... Do you want to jump jump in on this? I'm just gonna say, um, I'm just gonna say right to start off this podcast because it's how it started the gym. We're gonna offer a free session in team train cool. me and Cuba. Cool, cool, cool. Um, well, we'll go. Right. So look into the camera. You do this as well. No, in fact, no, you don't need to. I'll look into the camera. I'll look into it as well. Right, so before we start this podcast, this podcast is going to be everything to do with starting a gym. So it's going to be split into six segments. We're going to try to keep it as simple as possible. I'm joined by Cuba today for this podcast, and we both work in the same gym. Which gym is that, Cuba? It's called Team Train Fitness in the east end of Glasgow. So it's right next to Carntine Train Station. 
And what we're going to do is a goodwill gesture is we're going to do two free sessions, right? So one each and you can come in anytime, like just messages on Instagram, just message me like something to do with, I want to do one of the free sessions. So myself will do one and Cuba will do one. So you don't need a membership. You have nothing to lose. You absolutely need nothing. We'll test you with everything. Like mm -hmm. we said before, we'll do the, in the last podcast. Test. Yeah. So we'll take you through your session. We'll give you a chlamydia test. We'll do all sorts, right? So just let us know. Message one of us on Instagram.